Carolina blue kicks, pedal to the metal. Feeling like a puppet and the devil is Geppetto. Who can name that lyric? Send it to me. What's going on, y'all? Peace, love, and positivity. Sending it right to your front door, to your eardrums, to your crown chakra, third eye chakra, throat chakra, heart chakra, solar plexus, sacral root chakra, all of it. You know what I'm saying? We sending that good vibes right your way. This, of course, is episode 82. Ooh. Of the Bobby Keith Podcast. I, of course, am your host, Bobby Keith Podcast. That's not my name. I'm a little mumbled jumbled right now because I'm excited. I'm really excited. I just, before I started recording this episode, I took a look at the statistics. You know what I'm saying? I share this type type of stuff with y'all. You know, I'm an open book. This past week, these past four days specifically, whew, I mean, up until this point, four days ago, I received about 2,500 downloads lifetime. Just off, that's not including YouTube. YouTube's a whole different animal, but just downloads on like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, all that, Stitcher, Ghana, Ghana, however you say it. Not the country, it's the streaming service in India. Shout out to my uh, people out there in India giving me all the love. I love y'all for real. Um, so j- it just accounts for that stuff. So it's not YouTube, but up until that moment, I'm talking 2,500 lifetime. These past four days, though, these past four days, family, podcast family, I love y'all. Jeez. Uh, over a thousand, like almost 1,100. This is uh, obviously a shock to the system. <laughs> now, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how, uh, how real. I mean, take everything with a grain of salt. But most of all, I am like extremely humble and grateful that this has happened this is the largest spike i've ever received on the podcast side of things this is a uh, a huge deal for me for the podcast for y'all you know we keep rising together that's what we all about and I, i'm just on a high right now because of that that information i mean over a year and a half coming up on two years in this game you know what i'm saying i think september i hit the two-year mark so I mean, we're a little over a year and a half in this business, <laughs> and I finally had one week where it just went crazy, so I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for sticking around on the journey. We're never stopping, you feel me? Never stopping. Oh, <laughs> and that's just some great news to lead off the show. Oh, my goodness. I'm like floating on cloud nine. Humans, I'm sorry. Did I say cloud nine? What am I? What am I, an earthling? We're talking humans, aliens, other. We're floating on cloud 11. You know what I'm saying? That's where we hang out with the 11s. And that's what we about. So anyway, hope you all have a great week. Having a great week. As you can see, YouTube audience, I'm all Carolina geared out. You know what I'm saying? As we talked about a couple weeks ago, I stopped kind of caring about uh, UNC Ben's basketball or college basketball, period. A few years back, I don't know, it just lost me. I stopped caring. But when I found out uh, Coach K's last home game, this guy, he coaches Duke basketball. I'll do the real real sport-heavy side of things at the end of the show. Uh, Just as always, you know what I'm saying? Some people don't really love sports like that. Or basketball, really, it's just basketball. But you get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I found out that Coach K's last home game you know, this is like the greatest college basketball coach, debatably, certainly of our time. It's like the debates against John Wooden. Um, anyway, he was retiring. And the last time he would play on his home court, UNC was coming to town. So, of course, I turned that game on probably like a month ago or something like that. UNC kicked their asses, you know what I'm saying? That second half took over. Give me that win. Take it. So I was like, hell yeah, let's go. Take that. Take that. Shout out Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we ain't mm, going nowhere. We ain't going nowhere. Hey, we can't be stopped now. Cause it's bad boy for life. For some reason, that song came back into my life this week. I mean, when he said, if you can't feel me, (laughs) then you can't touch me. It's ugly. Trust me. Get it right, dog. We ain't never left. We just move and sound. Come on, man. It's official. I survived what I've been through. We all got drama. The saga continues. Like, 
I mean, he even addresses at the beginning of the verse. Don't worry if I write rhymes, I write checks. <laughs> Just because I'm iced off, they don't think I got a cool up. Oh, my God. Anyway, uh, shout out Diddy. You know what I'm saying? That verse was insane. I don't care who wrote it, whoever wrote it. That verse is incredible. Like, if you can't feel me, then you can't touch me. It's ugly. Trust me. Man, I was just talking to my guys about this recently. Like, someone new. I met someone new. And that person told my friend, like, yo, I rock with dude, speaking of me, because you can't touch him. Like, he won't let you in unless he wants to. He's on his own time, his own world. I'm just... So that Diddy verse basically saying the same thing. It's like, if you can't feel me, like if we can't feel each other, if this spiritual, if it's if it's not like that, you know what I'm saying? If you just gonna write me off or not even give me the time of day, nothing like that, then you can't touch me. Like seriously, you can't get into this. You can't get to the aura. You know what I'm saying? You can't get within eleven feet of the kids. You know what I'm saying? So for that song to come back into my life and realize what Diddy was saying in that, like. Hey, take that, take that, take that, for real. So anyway, oh, by the way, I guess this stays into the overarching topic I'd love to take a a deep dive into, and that would, of course, be, as you see from the title, fandom, being a fan. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about OnlyFans either. I'm talking about, well, shit, I guess you can be a fan of an OnlyFans person. I guess we can include that. It's not something I'm well versed in per se, but you could be a fan of an OnlyFans. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Yeah, of course you can. What am I talking about? Of course you can. But I'm just trying to say being a fan. Like, like right now, I'm full Carolina geared out. That is me being a fan. You know what I'm saying? When I talk about Ab Soul, that's me being a fan. And I want to dive into that. But let me just get back to the story that I was talking about. So that game happened, and I'm like, okay. Hell yeah. At the time, I don't think UNC was like super good or I mean, they were good, obviously, like the team was legit. I talked about it after I saw that game. It was legit. I mean, they got a great center and they had two guards that were very talented and two swing players. One could hit threes, one could play defense. So that's like pretty much what you need for a modern NBA basketball team. And of course, this is college, but I'm just saying all I do is watch NBA. So I'm just trying to relate it back to the college game. So anyway, when I saw UNC beat them boys up, you know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, shout out Carolina. Maybe I'll pull out my gear someday and uh, pull it back out. Check it out. But I forgot about it, you know what I'm saying? And then the tournament started. So I talked about last week. I didn't really watch it. Um, or two weeks ago, whenever. I wasn't, I'm not really watching the tournament like that. I'm still just kind of watching basketball, uh, NBA games. I catch a game here or there, not even a real, like a second half maybe. So boom, last week, I find out it's going to be Duke UNC in the Final Four. You shitting me? Duke UNC in the Final Four? This will be the last Duke UNC game ever for Coach K to participate in? And it's in the Final Four. Mind you, this is the first time Duke and UNC have ever played each other in the NCAA tournament, in this March Madness thing. They played each other in NIT in like the 70s, but that shit don't count. Come on. You know what I'm saying? That don't count. If they don't let Julius Irving's points count for the NBA, then we ain't counting no NIT bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Because Dr. J was the dude. We got to give him the respect he deserves because he really got rings on rings on rings, MVPs, you know what I'm saying, scoring titles, all that. But y'all don't want to give it to him because he was in the ABA for <laughs> the early prime, you know what I'm saying? All I'm trying to say is let's merge those stats because the NBA only had 18 teams at the time, so you can't say the ABA was a small league. Well, the NBA was a small league, so that's a whole nother story. <laughs> anyway... And shout out Dr. J. That's living legend. That's like real deal. When we talk about my top five, there's no leaving off the doctor, Julius Irving. Shout out Philly. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Long Island too. Ain't that crazy? Where my wife's from. He he grew up like 10 minutes from where my wife grew up. You know what I'm saying? He's from Hempstead. My wife's from Baldwin. That's like, go look it up on a Long Island map. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> Go look it up. <laughs> and then uh, he went and played in Philly, of course, after he played uh, for the Nets, you know what I'm saying? Um, the ABA Nets. And when he went and played for Philly, uh, my dad was alive, you know what I'm saying, in the city of Philadelphia. You know, it's just the connections are crazy. So anyway, back to the back two. So this is the first time Duke and UNC ever played in March Madness against each other. When I was a super fan for UNC, you know, I mean, like literally watching every game, like getting illegal streams to watch like them play. I don't know, like Wake Forest or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like really, really deep into the UNC universe. I was always dreaming of this UNC Duke matchup. So when I found out that that was happening Saturday night, it just passed. Woo, my whole world was in a was in a UNC, a, a, a Carolina blue whirlwind, a frenzy. So I pulled out all the gear. You know what I'm saying? I found it all. I made a hilarious TikTok, might I mind you. <laughs> Go check that out. <laughs> Where I literally, uh, I set up a clear container and I put all my Carolina gear in it. <laughs> and I made a little label that said Carolina gear. And then I dusted it off. I put like a bunch of you know, dust and cat hair and shit from around the house on top of the box. It was, it was pure comedy gold. I don't think it got the credit it deserved. <laughs> it will in due time, you know what I'm saying? Uh, universe willing, you know what I'm saying? It, it'll Everything will happen in due time. This is a, a very long-term theory mind you are listening to. This is a very, the marathon mind you're listening to. We, we understand this is a very long journey, and we just enjoying every moment of it, you heard? So anyway... I pulled out all that Carolina gear and I was head to toe, baby. And I'm head to toe right now. Like, YouTube audience. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I got the Carolina custom Kobe. It was this the Kobe 8s or 9s. Oh, these are nice. I got the custom Carolina, you know, Nike ID, Kobe 9 Elite Lows. Mm. With the mm, with the knit, you know what I'm saying? On the inside of the tongue, I wrote Chapel Hill. You know, I was that diehard of a fan. The I Kobe ID, Nike ID'd some Kobe's to hooping. Carolina theme. I didn't even go to the school. I got the nine from UNC. This is the only college I applied to that I didn't get into. Straight up. But I was still the number one fan, dog. Like straight up. So anyway. Boom, boom, boom. Something happened and I just stopped kind of watching. And I'm back. I'm all the way back. You know what I'm saying? You start talking about playing Duke, Coach K's last game, spoiling that party. And then we talking about playing Duke in the Final Four, getting a chance to spoil Coach K's whole existence. Oh, we there. We all the way there. Krzyzewski, you taking this L. You know what I'm saying? So that was an incredible game. Incredible game. UNC took the W. I'll give you a full breakdown later in the episode because I took notes. <laughs> I felt like Ryan Russillo watching that shit. You know what I'm saying? I felt like real deal uh, basketball media. <laughs> but anyway... That day, that whole day, I went around, uh, you know what I'm saying? I went around town, fully decked out, head to toe in Carolina gear. I didn't see one person. I mean, we went a lot of places. We did like Target. Uh, we went to the mall. We went and get pizza at Blaze Pizza. We were out and about, and I didn't see one person wearing a damn uh, UNC or Duke anything. So I don't know. Like, do people not care anymore? I, I just feel like as a kid, maybe it's because we were all kids and we were all with kids and shit. Uh, I just felt like people were more apt to, you know, really fuck with or rock with Duke and UNC. And especially in a game like this, I don't know. I didn't see it out in public. Maybe those people just weren't out. Maybe they were just really locked in. But that's one thing I have noticed with the kids, right? Like, I don't know. When we were in high school, you would see mad people with, like, you know, college sports. That was, like, the main thing people would wear, like, hoodie-wise. But now people have, like, fashion hoodies. <laughs> And that changed, you know what I'm saying? Me trying to get a Supreme hoodie in high school, nobody else did that. Like, nobody. Or, or like, Stussy. There was, like, a handful of us who were, like, Stussy in the hundreds and shit. Now that's, like, starter pack, you know what I'm saying? Like, back when I was in high school, you know what I'm saying? The kids with a little style, a little swag, they had, like, a Texas hoodie on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, a University of Texas or, like, University of Oregon gear, like, shit like that. That was popping when I was in school, uh, and it was weird if you wore, like, streetwear shit, you know what I'm saying? Came through with my purple label Stussy and nobody cared, you know what I'm saying? 
But anyway, when I, when we were out at the mall and shit, like all the high schoolers, Saturday Saturday at like 5 p.m., you know what I'm saying? Nobody with a sports gear on. Everybody's all dressed up. It's just interesting observing the changes in the generation. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love trying to understand these kids. You know what I'm saying? Like shit. Uh, the group chat just uh, we were just talking about um, what's my man's name? Uh, Jack Harlow, white dude, rapper. He does his thing. You know what I'm saying? He had he put a clip out where he sampled a uh, Fergie, glamorous. So like the sample for the new big record is like records we grew up with. Like I was a, a fan of Fergie with glamorous G L A M. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? O R O U S. That's how I can spell glamorous. Shout out to you, Fergie, with the chant. You know what I'm saying? We learned how to spell because of you. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> over there with your humps you know what i'm saying <laughs> shout out fergie damn uh but yo so like songs from i don't know when that came out it felt like it came out when we were in middle school at least when i was in middle school i say we because i talked to my wife mostly and uh, we're the same age so <laughs> when i was in middle school i feel like glamorous came out and now that is being sampled by like one of the bigger artists in music and he's like he flipped it and it sounds great. Like the G L A. It's in the background of the chorus. It sounds great. It sounds great. So anyway, I'm not sure how I got there per se. <laughs> but boom, I want to talk about fandom. You know what I'm saying? I think fandom is such an interesting concept because when I was out and about you know, I didn't see anybody rocking the Carolina gear, nobody rocking the Duke gear. Barely any, but I rarely see people being like fan fans out here unless it's like Juice World, you know, rest his soul. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why that hits with the younger generation so heavy. I I, I just missed it. I missed it. I guess I wasn't a fan. You know what I'm saying? If we bring it to the main topic. But basically what I'm trying to say is like, I don't know. Sometimes I see people look at fandom kind of corny. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you can't be a fan. Get off his dick. You know what I'm saying? Like. That type of shit. But I don't know. I kind of like being a fan, man. Like, why is it uncool for me to appreciate somebody doing their craft? What is that? What type of gatekeeping is that? You know what I mean? Like, why are we gatekeeping celebrating people? I don't know. Maybe I'm biased because I create stuff. But I feel like fandom has gotten weirdly a bad rap. Like, we really think it's weird if people are fans of someone. You know what I'm saying? The proverbial we, not like me, because obviously I'm a fan of so much shit. Like, I'm a fan of YouTube creators. I'm a fan of, you know, basketball players, cooks. Like, I'm a fan of so much podcasters. Like, all I do is be a fan. That's what I am. I'm a fan at the end of the day. That's why I do what I do, because I was a fan. You know, I was a fan of Allen Iverson. So I started wearing a sleeve. No joke. Sleeve, headbands, everything. Like, straight up, I think it's important to be a fan. I really do. I really do. I think it's weird that we hate, you know what I'm saying? We hate on people being fans. I don't get that. I really don't get that at all. Um, But it was just so fun to be all Carolina geared out. You know what I'm saying? Rooting for the team. You know? I think that's important. I think we kind of lost it. And I speak for myself. Like, as far as the NBA, that's my favorite sport. That's what I pay attention to the most. Uh, As far as, you know, sports, I pay attention to the NBA. I'm a huge fan of the league. But, you know, like I've said many times, I'm not really out here watching a specific team like I'm their biggest fan. You know, if you have to make me choose a team, it's the Sixers. From, like I said earlier, the Philly influence, Dr. J, Allen Iverson, Andre Iguodala, that's like, that's my childhood. So I picked the Sixers and born over there you know what I'm saying like I'll pick the Sixers but I'm not out here like diehard Sixers fan you know two of my best friends they're diehard Mavericks fans you know what I'm saying and it's really cool because you can really follow the team like that and love it like that and then those highs you know what I'm saying the highs from uh that 2011 championship that's like crazy the highs they're getting watching Luca right now is ridiculous for me I'm just getting those highs watching a regular game so I don't know and they do too. I'm not trying to say they don't because uh, they love basketball, period. But I'm just trying to say, like, I don't know. Sometimes I think it's 
beneficial to be like a super fan and have like a team and all that. Our generation, like this younger generation, this uh 20 and under, or I mean uh 30 and under, I think is a better way. We're kind of not team specific. We like the players, you know what I mean? Uh you know, KG and Ray Allen came to Boston when I lived over here. So I understood that like <laughs> player movement. You know, you could just be a KG fan. Like when he came to Boston, the Timberwolves jersey was still hard. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't it wasn't like uh you could stop being a fan of KG cuz he left the Timberwolves. It's like, "No, nah, you were a fan of KG cuz you you like KG. You like how intense he plays the game, not because uh what jersey he wears." And this young under 30, we all kind of understand that it's a person, not the team, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, it's a team sport. That's how you win. That's how the Warriors win. But, like, if Steph, I guess Steph's a weird example because he's one of the only lifetime guys, but I don't know. I feel like if Steph decided he wanted to play in the Garden and he wanted to go play for the Knicks, I don't think we would be, like, the maddest about it. I think we'd be watching Knicks games, you know what I'm saying? Just because of how great he is as a player. And I think outside of sports is when it starts getting weird like and I don't know within sports I mean there's just some people out there who hate just to hate they're like why are you a fan of sports why are you blah 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 like oh come on man we gotta love stuff we gotta be fans of some but when we talk about like music and stuff like that like content creators I've noticed within the community it's just weird like within the content creator or creator artist I don't know it's just kind of weird it's like weird for you to be fans of people. I don't get it. You know, you I listen personally, I listen to so many interviews and you know, so many people are like, nah, I can't listen to another podcast. I it's only me. I can't be a fan of any of that. Or it's like, you know, I don't listen to anybody's music. I'm not a fan of nobody but myself. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like, nah, I'm not a fan. You know, I don't know. I don't know what it is. If it's like a tough guy act, I mean some of the explanation is always like. I don't want my content to be influenced by others, but it's like, well, there's kind of nothing new under the sun. So when we look at human existence, everything's kind of been done and redone. As I talked about the glamorous flip, the kids hearing the Jack Harlow song, it's going to be like, oh, he created that sample. Like he created all that. Not even, I mean, you know, when you're young listening to music, you don't understand that there's a producer. You don't understand that the music was made by someone who isn't the artist and you don't understand that, you know, there's samples that music came from before. You don't understand any of that. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. It's just interesting. It's just interesting to see as I'm older here. Um, like, nah, I can't be a fan of that because it'll influence me. What? You know, you see it with comedians a lot, too. It's like, nah, I can't. I can't. Uh, I'm not a fan of anybody. It's like, What? <laughs> I don't know I just don't get it I'm a fan I'm truly a fan at the end of the day like I'm not too cool for none of that shit you know like I would love absolutely love to meet you know my favorite artist Ab Soul I'm a fan I'm not too cool to say like yo thank you you helped change my perspective same with the Flapper Zombies you know what I'm saying I'm a straight up fan like super fan or any of these athletes I've idolized my whole life you telling me that if you get in a room with LeBron James, you're not going to be a fan? Shit. <laughs> Come on, man. LeBron, dog. That's LeBron. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, come on. What are we doing here? It's okay to be a fan. I love fandom. You know how many, like, people I've become friends with just because of fandom? Like, mutual fandom? It's like, oh, you're just playing this song in the gym. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. You know, I like that music. You a fan? Oh, I'm a fan of them, too. You know what I'm saying? That's some that's some dope stuff. Like, what else do you like? Oh, you like him? I like him, too. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. It's crazy. You heard that song? Yeah, that song's great. Like, what are we doing? And I know I might be like, some of you might not even see this, but I don't know. I just see it because I'm so deep within the content space that, like, it's not cool to be a fan. Do you hear that? That's a bar, though, by the way. It's not cool to be a fan. Like, a fan is naturally something that cools. <laughs> if it went over your head, just tell me. 
<laughs> but yeah, why is it not cool to be a fan? A fan is nothing but cool. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to be a fan till the day I die. I'm a fan of everybody. I'm a fan of you. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm a fan of you. What are you doing? I'm a fan straight up. Like anybody doing it, you're doing it. What you do? You clocking in? Hell yeah. I'm a fan that you doing what's best for you. You know what I'm saying? You make music. Ooh, I'm a fan of that too. Don't let it get misconstrued. I'm a fan. It's important to be fans. You know, I really do think it's important to be a fan. And this UNC thing kind of triggered it for me this week. Like realizing, oh, we can't be too cool for school out here. What are we doing? We got to show love. What? You know, when we look back or look forward or just stay in the present moment, what's better than showing love? <laughs> Being a fan, you know what I'm saying? Being a hater, nobody wants that. That's not good to feel in the moment, being a hater. What? I mean, honesty is different than being a hater. Like, oh, the music never never uh, clicked with me. You know what I'm saying? Um, he didn't make me a fan, but it's not. It's more like, you know, uh, I don't know. The music didn't hit. I'm not a fan, but I respect the person straight up. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe you are a fan, and but you just don't like the music. Maybe you like the interview. I find myself doing that a lot. Like I'll be a fan of a lot of people just based off their interviews, like based off them being a human alien or other, let alone what music or content they create. Like at, at a certain point, it doesn't even matter for me. Like, Oh, I'm just a fan of that person. That person's good energy, good vibes, solid morals. You know what I'm saying? I'm a fan of that. So I don't know. I'm saying a lot of, uh, I'm saying a lot just to kind of get to the point of, you know, don't don't be afraid to be a fan. It's fine to be a fan. Be cool with it. You know, I'm a super fan. You know, I listened to uh, Bill Simmons and Ryan Russillo's podcast this morning. I'm a super fan of them. You know what I'm saying? Come on. I'm not missing when they get together and talk NBA. That's the shit right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not missing that. UNC is playing in the national championship game tonight. When you listen to this, it'll be over and I'll either be really happy about it or kind of bummed, but really not that badly affected by it. Because at the end of the day, I'm a fan and I'm just a fan of basketball more so than I am a fan of USC. <laughs> then you can start weighing the pros and cons on it. But I don't know. Don't be too cool for school, man. Gals, aliens, others like spread that peace, love and positivity. I think, you know, that's kind of the moral of the show is spread peace, love, and positivity. That's the frequency we're trying to move the universe more into. That's the knowledge base we're trying to push as a collective here. You know, I'm not working alone. It's all of us together as a species, as a as a earth. You know what I'm saying? It's all of us. It's the trees to the dirt to the bees. You know what I'm saying? All working together. The microbial... Uh, elements here you know what i'm saying like everything we all gotta work together to raise the frequency or to create more harmony or peace that's just kind of what i'm pushing you know peace love and positivity so of course of course that goes hand in hand with being a fan and i'm just a super fan of everything that i love you know and just don't be too cool for that like i know you got an artist or a musician or something a creator maybe they uh make a tv show that changed your life or some there's somebody who's had an influence on you that if you met you would just fan out <laughs> like everybody's got one like you can act like you're too cool like no nah, i'm not the famous people don't do nothing for me but like come on there's somebody who did something don't gotta be famous either it could be like i don't know some inventor that you just happen to know about or or somebody who hold the door for somebody it's like oh i'm a fan of you straight up like i don't know just don't be too cool to show love i guess is really a when we break down what being a fan is, it's just showing love. If you don't want to be a fan, then you don't want to be showing love. So what do you want to be showing? I don't know. The coin only got two sides in this equation. So you'd rather show hate. So you could be a fan or a hater when we boil down. So you could show love or show <laughs> the absence of love. So I guess there's three sides to the coin. <laughs> But I don't know. I guess all I'm trying to say is like there is countless people that I'm just a super fan of that I would just tell them. And I can't wait till I get these opportunities to just tell people, yo, I'm a super fan. 
<laughs> like, I love what you do. You help my life advance forward. For real. Like, I just want to have that opportunity to just do that with people. And I just love being a fan. So let's, uh, you know, root on. Root on the squad tonight. You know, UNC, go heels, baby. Go Tar Heels. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and hopefully it's a good game. And uh, I'll take a quick break and return after these messages. <laughs> And we are back. This week's presenting sponsor is kind of all over the place. It's going to be TikTok, Amazon, all the creators I support. You know what I'm saying? Everybody I love. Everybody I'm a fan of. We're not done the fan conversation. I just thought of a couple of things. But in the meantime, in between time, I got a notification, a little email during this little break I just took that said my Amazon package was delivered. And what was cool about this Amazon package was... Well, I got vitamins, I got, uh, you know, superfood powder, all that good stuff, stuff I usually get from Amazon. If you're wondering, that's where I get most of my uh, supplements and vitamins. Amazon, easy, comes to my door in a week or whatever. I don't have Prime. <laughs> anyway, I saw a TikTok. Like like y'all know, I'm, I'm new on TikTok, a couple weeks in, maybe a month. Nah, I don't think I'm a month in yet, almost a month, maybe. But I'm a few weeks in on TikTok and uh, I just kind of got suckered into my first purchase. <laughs> this creator, I want to give him a shout out. His name's Brett, B underscore Turner 50. This guy right here hipped the whole world to the NFC home hack. The NFC tag home hack vibe. Not NFT, you know what I'm saying? Not the not the money laundering. <laughs> Ooh, that's the dark side of being a fan, right? Oh, we'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that in a second. Ooh. Okay. NFC. Which, if we look at this little baggie, which is totally not drugs, it's NFC tags. These are fucking sick. So basically, I think a lot of y'all use Apple, right? Apple Pay. Um, Apple Pay. Uh, what else is NFC tag? I mean, that's the main one, like tapping. To pay for something uh that's nfc technology and it's really cool but one thing i didn't know until i saw this uh, little tiktok very informative tiktok i'm in the nerd corner of tiktok apparently because i got my little info that it knew i would eat up <laughs> get these little tags right they're just little stickers again they're super small and this is dirt cheap i, I want to say it's like less than uh, 50 cents per tag or something i could have bought more and got it at a cheaper rate but they were super cheap um and basically what you could do is you stick them anywhere and then you could take your phone scan the tag and then program the action you want your phone to do so i just set one up for fun in the in the main in the break <laughs> um i got a bunch of records over there but i don't really have a record player at the moment i'm in the middle of getting a, a nice one i had well my mom had one and it just it wasn't super great but anyway this record right here the waters mick jenkins if you're not familiar with it i suggest you get familiar with it i'm a super fan of mick jenkins stay on the point with the fan you know what i'm saying this album can change your life if you really absorb the content if you let the water sink in the truth which is what the water is referring to in the uh what do you say in the ethereal sense <laughs> of course the water just drink more water is a very potent message that i also preach you know we're gallon and a half a day gang over here you know what i'm saying but basically what i did with this nfc chip youtube audience you see it i put it on the paper in the album right and i programmed an action to it super simple to do on your phone it's a native iphone app called shortcuts and you can do this right on your iphone i'm pretty sure obviously android too i think probably even with more customization but i programmed it so when i tap my phone to this tag the album starts playing on a speaker i have in the room not even on my phone on a speaker for the quick example i'm going to cut it off because i don't want to get copyright claimed even though this is a free album i do it for the free free nation shout out mick i don't think i would get Copyright claimed, but I just want to, I'll cut it off just to show you, but watch this. Ready? Whew. 
anticlimactic. Do I have to open my phone? I had to open my phone. And now it's playing. Heard that? It was a lot cooler when I didn't have to do it on camera, I suppose. Let's try one more time. Running your automation. And it's pausing for some reason. Well, that was a lot cooler. Uh, <laughs> maybe I don't have it dialed in, per se. Um, well, now it's playing. It's because I pressed play. We close music. It's the last time you'll see this, right? Oh, it keeps hitting it over and over, and that's the problem. So it's running it and then canceling it, running it and then canceling it. But you hear it's playing in the background. So that's really cool, and there's a million different ways you could use those tags. So I just want to shout out uh, NFC tags. Um, TikTok for showing me that algorithm, right? Or showing me that video, the TikTok algorithm, uh, the creator. B Turner 50 for showing different use cases for this. Um, and I have a few that I'm excited to try. Uh, some, uh, like, I don't know, I meditate every day. So if I could put a sticker near my yoga mat or something, so I don't even have to go and open the meditation app, it just does it for me. And I don't know, I'm thinking about stuff like that. Uh, I think I want to put one um, on our Scrabble board because we use. Uh, you know, the official Scrabble dictionary on the internet, <laughs> the Merriam-Webster Scrabble dictionary. So I don't know, have that pop up when Tal and I want to play Scrabble, shit like that. I think that would be really fun. So uh, <laughs> uh, I can't wait to use all those tags, Nerd Corner. Uh, so shout out to Amazon for delivering it, <laughs> TikTok for delivering the video to me, and for B. Turner for essentially selling me an NFC tag, although he got none of the money, um, which, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so boom. Uh, one thing I want to touch on, because I have a lot more I want to touch on with just being fans in general and how cool it is. But uh, one thing that just brought to my attention while I was doing that little tirade was NFT creators um, kind of are abusing fan bases right now in a fraudulent, seemingly fraudulent thing. Um, now I'm not going to say no names. Or anything like that. But there's been a lot of, uh, you know, notable people, famous people of all sorts, all uh, types of creator, all types of famous that have done some sort of NFT, uh, NFT, non fungible token art thing that they had a lot of people invest a lot of money and then just canceled it and never spoke of it again and deleted all the tweets and deleted everything. And that's just pretty sus. And I guess that's the dark side of being a fan is you might get abused <laughs> in the physical or literal sense uh, from an artist in a spiritual sense, a monetary sense. You know, I've just seen countless cases of this happening. Um, if I people that uh, should be showing love to the fan base and instead they're just taking the money of the fan. I've gotten got. I don't want to highlight anybody. Not on NF, uh, not on NFTs, but just on things that people were selling. I was a fan of the people. They're selling something, albeit a course, a book, whatever, and I send the money and it never comes. And it's just like, oh, that's kind of not nice. I mean, I'm still a fan of what you're doing, but I just felt like I got scammed out of a bunch of money. So, you know, that's kind of the dark side of being a fan. Um, we could look at going to Astro World. I know it's kind of fresh and... Uh, that's, I don't know, that's a dark part of being a fan. Like, something bad could happen in a collective space where you're all fans. So, so I don't know. But again, the positives of being a fan, right, is you can bond with people over that. I mean, there's nothing like going to an event where everybody's a fan of the person. 
I mean, Tal and I went and saw a- Ali Wong. I almost said Ali, but it's Ali, obviously. Because um, Muhammad Ali, but it's Ali. It's a, it's a th- <laughs> same spelling, different pronunciation. Gotta love English. Anyway, um, we went and saw Ali Wong, and it's like everybody in that uh, theater locked in. Massive fan. And we just had a great time because everybody was collective collectively there to have a good time to celebrate that we're a fan of this we're a fan of this thing called comedy and we're a fan of this person and she's fucking hilarious and i don't know i I love that i absolutely love that there's nothing like getting in a space where everybody's kind of a fan of it i mean some of my best times were at concerts for uh you know like the flabber zombies like oh my god my people are all here (laughs) all these little hippie kids who just love the zombies, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's such a great moment to collectively be in a space where we're all fans together. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's something that you can't even write. Like, I'm sure the kids who were at that UNC Duke game that I keep mentioning, the kids who were there in the arena, all being fans together. Wow. It's got to be a different feeling. I mean, whew, it really does. Just collecting in a space and sharing that energy. It's got to be incredible. So... You know, I just think being a fan is really cool. It's really cool to show love. It's all the positives. And I kind of feel bad about that Astroworld comment because, like, everybody there probably was there with good intentions and just wanted to be a fan and wanted to have a good time. And things went south. Um, Do your own research on that event. It was wild and chaotic. But, yeah, I just think it's okay to be a fan. (laughs) I know I keep repeating it over and over again, but... Be a fan of whatever you want to be a fan of. Be a fan. Are you a fan of like anime or some shit? And you don't know if it's okay to do that. I mean, these days it's like super popular, but say it. Just say it loud and proud. Be a fan of what you're a fan of. Are you a Harry Potter stan? Do that shit to the max. You know what I'm saying? Dumbledore for your wizard, your wizardry. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. Pogo puff that shit. You know what I mean? Like we really bad about it. If you a fan, be a fan. Don't be afraid to admit it. I know personally, I'm a fan of the Lego, uh, the Lego movies. Them shits is hard, like straight up. You ever seen them? Oh my god! If you want an airplane, the Lego movie's gonna be there. If you want an airplane that has the TVs on it, you going overseas? Watch the Lego movie for me for the one time. That shit is incredible. I'm a super fan of the Lego movie. <laughs> And don't be ashamed to admit it. Yo, I'm a fan of trashy reality television. You know what I'm saying? I'm a big fan. Uh, Tal and I watched, uh, what the hell is the name? Love Island. We started watching Love is Blind. Like, yo, all this shit is crazy. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> don't be ashamed to admit it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. When our goddaughter would come over, I'm a fan of this show called Bread Barber. That shit is hitting. It's a kid's show, but it's a good show. Straight up. <laughs> it's okay to be a fan. Don't be ashamed to admit it, you know? I'm a fan of so many people on YouTube. It's ridiculous. From uh, van lifers to travel the world people to pick up basketball players. I'm a super fan all over the board. You know what I'm saying? And... uh I'm just a super fan. There's a show called uh, Full Size Run. It's a sneaker show. I'm a huge fan of this shit. It's uh, every week they gather, uh, you know, notable people in the sneaker world and talk about sneakers. It's such a good show. I'm a super fan. And I'm always going to tell somebody if, you know, if if they're in sneakers or something like, yo, go check that out. It's fire. It's super fire. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I think it's okay to be a fan. It's beautiful. <laughs> And speaking of uh, being a fan, last week was episode 81, you know, rest his soul, Kobe Bryant. Let's uh, tie a little circle, tie a little knot on these pieces of information that I've been bringing up. On one of these episodes of Full Size Run, I think last week's, it was brought to my attention that uh, the Bryant family and Nike are have reached an agreement and Kobe's are probably coming back to the market, which is just incredible because... You know, I'm, I got Kobe's on my feet right now, straight up. I got the Kobe 10s within eyesight, straight up. Some of the best basketball shoes ever are Kobe's. That's undeniable. You know, I I started getting into the Kobe line at the 7, I think. Um, before that, I was wearing bronze and hyperdunks. Um, 
But yeah, the Kobe 7, I got the Snow Leopards. And from that moment on, I'm like, oh, I see why these basketball shoes are goaded. So then I got 8s, I got 9s, I got 10s. I just love them. I love the Kobe's. But obviously, since he passed, you can't get Kobe Bryant shoes no more. You can't. The Nike ones, at least. Um, you can't get them. And they're super high demand because basketball players know it's a great basketball shoe to play in. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know how the Jordans were? The Kobe's are now like in the early 2000s, you wanted to wear Jordans. Now, if you're a Hooper, you want to wear Kobe's. Like it just is what it is because you don't want to pl- use an active player's shoe. That's kind of the thing. Like, I don't know if you're in the league and you're wearing Kyrie's and you're playing Kyrie. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you can give them that. But that's the whole thing. Of, I guess that's the line between competition and being a fan because obviously you a fan of Kyrie if you're wearing Kyrie's but if you're a competitor you can't really wear Kyrie's against Kyrie I don't know I would personally I think I would I'll be like yo I'm a massive fan (laughs) let's hope your shoes protect my ankles against your shit (laughs) but yeah it's really cool that the Bryant family and the Nike basketball team have reached some sort of agreement and we can get these Kobe's re-released let's get them all let's get them all retro do you know what I mean I, I need a I personally need some eights and the nines those I think were my favorites the sevens were hard too but I think the eights and the nines and the tens you know what I really like the tens I like the air bubble as my knees get older I want that air bubble so give me the eight nines and tens I'll, I'll eat them up sevens too I like the sevens too I wore my sevens outside a lot so Hey, you know what? I'll get all the Kobe's. Just give them all to me. I never wore the sixes. Give me the Grinches. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the cool thing about Kobe's is most of them are vegan, you know? It's, they kind of got away from leather on the Kobe line, which is dope. But anyway, so yeah, shout out to that. I'm a huge fan of sneakers. <laughs> Don't be ashamed to admit it. You know what I mean? Like straight up. That's how I'm feeling these days. If you like it, you like it. If you like it, I love it. You know what I'm saying? For real. If you love it, I love it. Let's talk about it. Let's be fans. Let's spread that love. Let's spread that peace, love, and positivity all day, man. All day, baby. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, man. And it's so, oh, man. There's nothing like it. Just, you know, exchanging energy with people is probably one of the biggest reasons we're here, right? On Earth is to learn these things and exchange energy with people and do stuff like that. So it's nothing like being mutually fans of some i think that's probably why religion is so popular you know what i mean like people are fans of the religion <laughs> so oh you like you like that jesus dude oh shit me too you know what let's be homies let's go to the same place once a week you know what i'm saying like stuff like that it's kind of like that uh you know we look at uh let's take this directly to basketball to jordan full circle you know, you fan of Jordan, I'm a fan of Jordan. Let's be, go to these uh, Bulls games, you know, if we're living in the 80s and 90s. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. We all come together with things and we share passions on stuff. And it's some of the greatest moments. It's how people kind of get through. That's why, uh, you know, that's why it's 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 so respected, I guess is one way to put it. When we look at, like, monks out there meditating in the mountains not speaking to a soul for years silence for years just out here meditating on world peace like there is benevolent people out here who don't even partake in anything to literally just exist and pray for world peace like yo that's heavy it's super heavy you don't even get to celebrate i mean i guess we don't know we don't know we could be fans of stuff but I don't know. I think I I said mostly everything I could say about how great it is. Fandom. Be a fan. You know what I'm saying? I used to knock it. Don't get me wrong. I used to knock it. Like, oh, you fan of that. Why are you fan of that? That don't matter. Nah, I would never do that no more. Like, unless you a fan of, like, some super negative shit. Like, (laughs) unless you got one of them tiki torches, dog. I don't know if I'm a fan of you. Straight up. I really don't think I'm a fan of you. You know what I'm saying? So... (laughs) you one of them you one of them then oh and i know we we all we got to come together but i don't know there's some beliefs that are like yo i don't know i don't know but yeah that's probably everything i gotta say about being a fan and from that we're gonna smoothly transition 
glide, slide and glide right into that Duke Carolina game. We getting deep into it. You know what I'm saying? We getting deep into it. Hey, straight up, we getting deep into this game because it was a doozy. It was an absolute masterpiece of a basketball game. You know, I'm talking on the group chat. We were like, this is a heavyweight fight. You know, they exchange rounds going on 13-0. Duke would do a 13-0 run or or uh, I think it actually went. It was like Duke 7-0 run, Carolina 13-0 run, then Duke 6-0 run, like exchanging rounds. And then it just started being two for two, three for two, two for one, two. Heavyweight battle. Incredible game. You know, in that first half, uh, UNC jumped out real quick, jumped out to a quick lead, quickly erased, quickly erased. Um, you know, Baycott picked up, uh, I think, two fouls early. No, that was in the first one. No, he got two fouls within the first half. Uh, the Duke centers got in foul trouble real early, the Williams kid and uh, the Theo John kid. He got four fouls in the first half, man. Like, shit. A lot of fouls in that first half. One really unique thing I saw this is actually a super crazy note I took down. Um, let's see. So, UNC basically, they run everything through the two guards, Love and Davis, Caleb Love and uh, is it R R J or R R something Davis? You know, one of those initial names. Apologies to the Davis family. I don't remember your name, bro. But, um, again, I, I know I got Carolina on, but this is the second game I watched all year. <laughs> or the third. Or the second whole game. I partially watched uh, one of the previous rounds against UCLA. Anyway, um, so Love and Davis, right? They're the primary ball handlers. And then you got Baycott, who's like this super, superstar big. I'm talking, he had 20 boards in that uh, Final Four game, like, Legit incredible big. So they run everything through the guards in the big, right? And then they got Shooter and uh, this kid Manic, who's like a fifth year senior, um, who uh, he can shoot the shit out the ball. He plays solid defense. I mean, he was playing against Bancaro, who's supposed to be like the number one pick in the draft. He was playing against that Duke kid, Bancaro. And he was doing his thing, you know what I mean? He was really doing his thing. He was playing solid defense. And uh, apparently, he's a graduate student, you know what I'm saying? I mean, when you think about college, right, like there's graduate students, you just don't really see it in the sports world. So it's interesting um, that how that plays out and eligibility, I don't really fully understand it or whatever. But anyway, um, so it's them. And then there's this guy, Leaky Black, who's like really good defender. He could shoot it, but other teams would rather he shoot it than the other four players on the court. Um, so basically, uh. He's more of a slasher, I guess. I don't know. I've only again, I've only seen two whole games and a partial one of a third game. So I don't know. The kid Leaky, he's like super hustle, super slasher, great, great uh driver. But maybe if you're on the other team, he's the guy you want to shoot the ball and you want to make crucial decisions. Um so basically what happened was Caleb Love was bringing the ball up the court, right? And uh Black gets screened on some off-ball action. He pops up, gets the ball. Um, and it was on the right side, right? So picture Black coming off, coming up on the right side, right side wing. He gets the ball from Love. It's just him. Baycott's on the post. He set the screen to set him free. So it's just two-man game, basically, on the right side of the court between uh, Leaky Black and Baycott. So uh, Leaky feeds Baycott the ball. Bancaro was guarding Black, right? And since Black was kind of weak at shooting, or Duke in Duke size, he was again. I don't, I haven't seen him play enough to really judge that, and I don't really want to judge anybody on anything. But it's basketball; you can kind of be subjective. Um, basically, Bancaro helped off Leaky Black because you'd rather double Baycott than a. Uh, You'd rather double Baycott than play him straight up one-on-one because you'd rather have Leaky Black at the kickback and have the open three. So basically what happened is Baycott saw the double coming and then he had to kick it back out to Black. And uh, uh, Bancaro, you know, uh, uh, Bancaro 
then jumps back from the double, fed it back or uh, black out the ball. Bancaro was rushing him. He could have shot. He didn't. Then he fed it to Love, and then Love hit a great floater. Now here's the interesting part, right? So the very next possession. So this happened, and I was I was really honed in because I was, you know, I'm I was really being a fan. So I'm like, okay, you don't want that to happen again. You don't want Black being the one feeding Baycott because Duke has decided that if that's the case, you're going to send Black's defender to double Baycott, which is good strategy, being as Black doesn't shoot the ball as well as everybody else in the court, like Love, like Davis, like Manic. So that was their decision. Coach K's decision defensively was to do it like that. So boom, the very next trip up the court, very next trip, you would think they're going to run the same set. And they actually lined up to run the exact same set. But instead, Love came down and switches the action side. So Black comes off the screen on the other side. Then when Black comes up, Love waves him off. Manic comes to the high post. And it's still Baycott on the right side. But now Black, Davis, Love um, are all on the left side. Manic comes to the high post. He pops from the screen action. And Baycott's over there on the block by himself. So now Manic has the ball high post. He got open because the action was, everybody thought it was going to black, but Love waved it off. Manic pops up. That's the second read. He gives it to Manic at the high post. Now, Manic, all he has to do is bounce it down to Baycott. But you can't leave Manic because he's hitting three threes a game. So, basically, <laughs> um, Manic fed the ball to Baycott. Uh, Manic's defender couldn't help. And Baycott just went to work and drew the fourth foul on Theo John, a Duke center. Basically, all because of the smarts of Love. Well, I don't know. Hubert Davis might have called that, but it, it, it kind of looks like Love made that decision on the fly. Like, switch the action side. Let's get Black on the left side now because that didn't work on the right side. Now we're going to wave him off and we're going to feed the second option, which would be Manic coming to high post. I don't know. All I'm saying is that is some high level shit right there. You know, just as a basketball fan, like for that to happen in the span of there wasn't even a break in the game. There was no timeout. There was that was literally one possession. Duke did something. UNC got the ball and then understood how to completely flip the script because <laughs> they saw the action was coming. They saw that Ban Carroll was going to double if Leaky had the ball on the wing and was going to feed Baycott. Bank Arrow was going to double straight up every time. So I don't know if that was Davis who made the call or I don't know if Love just knew point guard instincts. But that was beautiful. <laughs> he literally switched the action side and waved off Leaky. Got the ball to Manic High Post. Oh, it was just genius basketball. You know, somewhere, somewhere uh, inside me, there's like a coach. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, no Paterno, you know what I'm saying? Sorry, the comedian in me had to make that cheap joke. Uh, but somewhere in me, I'm like a basketball coach, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that made me happy seeing that. Like, oh my God, the skill level, the IQ. You know, because I don't see myself as the best basketball player in the universe, but I see my basketball IQ being very high. That's why I love Andre Iguodala, you know what I'm saying? Like, just high IQ basketball shit. You know what I mean? And that's what I enjoy. I love that. I love the decision making. That's why I love LeBron, man. Like, he's just straight up a very smart player. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, so anyway, yeah, that was beautiful to see. So at that moment, I'm like, <clears throat> you know, it was a close game. It was still tied. It was like neck and neck at that point. But I'm like, oh, man, I think UNC is going to do something here because they already took their heart. And Cameron, they already took their heart. And now all they got to do is snatch the soul. You know what I'm saying? Like, Coach K, you done, bro. <laughs> and you know who's going to end it? Carolina. We're going to send you home. You ain't coaching no more. <laughs> UNC going to hand that L out. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, wee. Oh, my God. And, uh, you know, in the second half, things just went crazy. Like I was saying, there was a like a 6-0, a 13-0, a 7-0. Just trading runs, trading rounds. And... That last four minute stretch, I mean, I mean, the last eight minute stretch, it was already crazy. But the last four minute stretch, uh, I mean, in the eight minute, let's talk about it. So eight minutes to go in the game. Um, I think seven inch, somewhere between the seven and eight minute uh, TV commercial, Baycott rolls his ankle bad. And he actually stepped uh, 
on a I think it was leaky I think he stepped on leaky's foot by accident you know what I mean uh just under the basket play he landed on leaky's foot rolls his ankle real bad it looks bad at first but you know when you roll your ankles it's awful at first but in 15 minutes you're good you're good if you're in the final four you're good well Baycott he only took like five minutes he was good you know there was like uh one one timeout I think UNC called a timeout um I think, to, you know, to get him off the court, get him medical attention. And he, you know, he sat down. He started walking. He started walking to the training room. And 30 seconds later, he was ready to check in. And that was a moment. That was a moment. You know what I mean? Like, oh, wow, we thought it was oh, We thought there was no more center. You know, as a UNC, I'm like, I was rooting for UNC, like, for real. And I'm like, damn, we just lost our center. He's got 19 rebounds. <laughs> in a... In a you know, he was a uh, 25, no, 30, 30 something minutes into the game. And he's got 19 rebounds. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> you don't even see that in the NBA unless it's Andre Drummond straight up. Like, you don't even see that. He's got a knack for getting the rebound, which is beautiful. Which what makes me believe he's one of the few players on this UNC team that's going to make it to the league straight up. Like, Baycott can play in the league, in my opinion. I don't know if he's no starting dominant center, but he certainly deserves a spot. You telling me he can't back up for DeAndre Ayton? You telling me he can't back up for Joel Embiid, boy? Oh, my God. Let's get him in the league. He could be a backup center next year. Let's do it. The Warriors, I know they got Wiseman. You know what I'm saying? Something, something. A little something, you know what I'm saying? Just a little little backup. Go to Charlotte. Get that young core. Anyway... (laughs) Basically, then in the last four minutes, it was a series of plays emphasized, capped off by a captivating Caleb Love three. I mean, this man went unconscious. He was just, so in the beginning of the game, he was pulling. I think he started 0 for 5. He was just pulling. And then it was actually that play I was speaking of earlier. The failed uh, pass in the paint to Baycott when they doubled. And they had to kick it back out to Leaky. Leaky swung it right to Love. There might have been a pass in between there, but it wound up in Love's hands. And then Love did a little runner from the elbow. Then he saw the ball go in. And then he started attacking. And when you start attacking, you know as a shooter, you just got to see the ball go in. And it's easier when you're closer. And then he started to be able to pull that three off the dribble. That's an NBA player right there. Caleb Love, NBA. Let's get him to the league. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. He could be an impact player. He knows how to score the ball, and he's got utmost confidence. You know what I'm saying? So let's get Caleb Love in the league. And you know we all about the love, so let's get Caleb Love to the league. (laughs) Davis, he's solid too. Hopefully he can get to the league. I don't know about Manic, you know what I'm saying? Maybe. Maybe. Straight up, he was playing good defense. Maybe that's white bias. You know, there's a dude out here with a ginger beard playing on UNC. (laughs) Maybe I'm just hating. (laughs) Oh, man, but... uh, I don't know if he could he could be league league, but hey, let's see all five UNC players in the league. Why not? And they got Cam Johnson's little brother, the only player coming off the bench. You know what I'm saying? There's one other guy who got a couple minutes because of foul trouble, but it's really just the five plus uh, Cam Johnson's little brother who had to come in when Baycott fouled out with like a minute and change left. And he did fine. You know what I'm saying? So I'd love to see all those guys to the league, but I really feel strongly that... uh. Love and Baycott can make an impact in the NBA, like an impact straight up. And I don't say that easily. I used to, you know, I've been burned by a lot of uh, UNC players. I used to think, uh, what's my man's name? Uh, John Henson. It was going to be a superstar. Like, he, was, he was solid. He was solid. Solid backup big. Didn't really pan out. You know what I'm saying? Um, Hansborough, obviously. He was okay for a couple of years. Didn't pan out. You know, my last, uh, the last player I really, really rocked with at UNC was Marcus Page. You know what I'm saying? And that's the last time I saw a uh, a Carolina game, you know, that championship game against Villanova where they uh, sent him home. <laughs> Marcus Page hits the craziest shot. And then uh, Villanova, dude, I forget who hit it. Uh, it wasn't Brunson or Bridges. They were both on the team, I believe. But another guy hit the three. And that was crazy. Uh, so hopefully I have a game as good as that tonight. You know what I'm saying? As far as entertainment wise for this UNC Kansas national championship. But yeah, I really think uh, 
I really think Love and Baycott could do something in the league. Davis, too. Davis is solid. He's not making mistakes. He knows how to get his shot off. His mid-range is ridiculous. I really think Davis could be great, but I don't know. Love has the it factor. And they're kind of similar guards. You know what I mean? They're similar. Um, uh, uh, Davis might be more traditional point guard than Love. Love's kind of a new school point guard who he will, you know, he will feed his players as I laid out earlier, calling off uh, calling off the actions, switching the size of the actions. Real point guard shit. But he's more of that Dame Lillard point guard. You know, I'm going to score and we going to win. <laughs> Utmost confidence. I love it. So it's cool to see. I think these dudes might make impact in the league. Baycott and Love, straight up. That's my prediction for UNC players in the draft. I have no clue what they're projected. I don't really do the draft stuff until we're like a week away from the draft. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't know. I just don't. Like I said, I really don't care about college basketball like that. So it's fun that I got back into it and I get to be a fan this week. <laughs> oh, man. So that was an incredible game. Like, undeniably incredible game. Duke is gone. The Coach K era is over. You know, there's a part of me that is just rejoicing. And there's a part of me right now rejoicing. Like, not a throwback part, but like a throwback part of me is like... Yeah, <laughs> the current part of me is like, hey, shout out Coach K. I think he's got to be a top five coach of all time, right? Let's do the top five coaches of all time. Why not? So, I mean, if we're talking college, John Wooden and Mike Krzyzewski, right? Those are the two. Coach K and John Wooden. John Wooden, UCLA coach. I think he's got the most rings of anybody. So, boom, it's those two. Then I guess in the debate for college, what do we have? We have like Dean Smith, UNC legend. He's in the debate, but I don't know if he makes it. Um, Kyle Pari, I mean, he's in the debate. I don't know if he makes it. He's more about getting players ready for the league, which is a separate skill set. So I don't really think you could give it to him. Um, Patino, you know, he was good. I don't know if you give it to him. Uh, there's a lot of great coaches like that, but nobody's really in Wooden and uh, Coach K's class. And shout out Roy Williams. You were great, but... Uh, you're not at that level. I love you, bro. I, UNC fan. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think you in that all timer. I mean, you're you're top eleven. Let's put Roy Williams top eleven. But top five, top five basketball coaches of all time. I think from college it's just those two. Let's go to the league. Of course, Phil Jackson. Come on now, Phil Jackson's in that. Are you kidding me? I think you got to give it to Red. As much as it pains me, right? Because, like, what did we really see from Red? I mean, I didn't see nothing from Red Auerbach. It was before my time. And I know that's blasphemy living in uh, living in New England. So uh, he's on the he's on the border. So for my guaranteed three, I got Wooden, Krzyzewski, and uh, uh, Phil Jackson. And then we got, we got Pop. Let's put Pop in there. Come on. Greg Popovich. Most wins of all time. NBA coach, obviously in there. And that fifth spot, you know, that fifth spot, I'm be- I'm in between a couple places. I'm like Pat Riley, Spolstra, just kind of a Riley disciple. You might have to give it to Riley. I'm going to give it to Riley. <laughs> I'm going to give it to Pat Riley. You know what I'm saying? So that's my top five coaches of all time. I know Bobby Knight, he's on the board, like all this stuff. But let's do a... Phil Jackson, in, in order, in my opinion. Phil Jackson, number one. Um, Krzyzewski, number two. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> Popovich, number three. That would leave, uh, you know, let's go Wooden four. Riley five. That's my top five coaches of all time. Shout out to the coaches out there. You know what I'm saying? Getting everybody together. Building a team. You know what I'm saying? Shout out. Yeah, so I'm excited for this championship game. I mean, who knows? Kansas could win. UNC might have lost by the time you're listening to this, but I'm excited to check it out tonight. I'm dumb excited. I'm so hyped. I can't wait. Outside of that, ain't shit much to say. I hope y'all had a beautiful week. I had a great week. I don't think I got much more to say, y'all. Be a fan, you know? Spread that peace, love, and positivity. I think we hit the hour mark, which is usually where I try to get to. Yeah, we over the hour mark. So 
I think we're going to wrap this up. I love y'all. Send y'all peace, love, and positivity. This has been episode 82 of the Bobby Keith Podcast. Send y'all peace, love, and positivity as always. Humans and aliens, other and others. <laughs> I'm signing out. Peace.